our colonies, our relationships, and our lives are designed around it. I just uh, add here a poem we all are acquainted by now is uh, by a student of Jamia. He's called Amir Aziz. Uh, kill us, we will become ghosts and write of your killings with all the evidence. You write jokes in court, we will write justice on the walls. We will speak so loudly that even the deaf will hear. We will write so clearly that even the blind will read. You will write injustice on the earth. We will write revolution in the sky. Everything will be remembered, everything recorded. Thanks. Um, so we will march from here to the Indian Embassy in about 15 minutes from now. We have a couple of a uh, couple more people who would like to say uh, uh, a few words before that, and if someone else wants to. Uh, come up and say something, please come up, here's an open space. If not here, we will also have some time once we get to the embassy uh, where, um, yeah, um, feel free to come find one of us with the loudspeaker if you'd like to say something publicly. Um, I'd like to invite uh, filmmaker Pushpendra Singh who also screened uh, their film Lela or Satgeet at the Berlinale uh, this week and uh, Uspindra would like to say a few words to us. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, you know, I would just like to say uh, things that uh, uh, you know the situation is so bad that uh, you know you open WhatsApp groups and you see that your school groups, your family members, uh, you know, everyone uh, has been polarized. So the society is so divided uh, that I feel that, uh, you know, we have to change the narrative. Uh, it's, it's, it's so vicious that within our families, our families are divided. You know, hatred has, has spread so deep. So Delhi is not isolated as my friend has spoken and as, as many of you have spoken. So the need for the hour is that, uh, you know, uh, we need to act and the time is right now. We need to change the narrative. You know, we can't sit idle and, 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 and say that, okay, things will improve. They won't improve. We'll have a, uh, a situation like everyone is saying, like in, in, in Germany. We don't want that. So please, please go out on social media. Please, please talk to your friends. Please talk to your family members. Argue. Fight, whatever you need to do, you know, there should be no fear. The women in Shaheen Bagh has set us, uh, has, has given us an example, you know. And, and, and the Delhi riots are just a way to crush d dissent. You know, let's not be afraid. Let's not, uh, uh, you know, what they did in Gujarat. Suddenly, you know, people were silent. They want to silence us, you know. So let's not get silent. Let's, let's make films. Let's say poetry, poetry, let's do theatre, let's draw, let's talk, you know, let's do something, let's act, and the time is now. Thank you. Uh, I just got back from Delhi a couple of days ago and I had mixed feelings about leaving um, but on my last night there uh, I was with I was watching some of the kids at one of the protest sites that had been charged by the police the night before um, and these kids were you know more interested in taking selfies and braiding my hair than anything else <laughs> um, but we were talking to them and we asked them what, you know, uh, what happened last night, and they said, 
well, you know, the police took us to a special corner and beat us. And one kid was limping, and, and we said, are you limping because of that? And he said, yes. But then he was like, can I have your phone? I want to take another selfie. So, like, this is what we're dealing with. Like, these are children, and if you ask them why they're there, they say, because I don't want to go to a detention camp. And if you ask them what a detention camp is, and I talked to some kids at Shaheenbog too, they say, well, it's like a place with a big cage, and then they only let you out to work. So, for all the naysayers in your lives and your family WhatsApp groups or whatever, like, you know, they might say this is hypothetical or some sort of exaggeration, but why should kids even know about that stuff? Like, why should they even, why should that even be on their mind, you know? So just, I, I really think that's what we have to do is we have to remember the kids um, because they know what's happening and they know more, I think, they're more willing to face reality than a lot of the adults in their lives. So, um, and I also just want to say that I work a lot with refugees in India. I have not met a single, single refugee, non-Muslim from Afghanistan, Pakistan, or Bangladesh that supports CAA. So that's all a charade. It's a political charade. Those people might not be able to say it because there's consequences for saying such things, but I'll say it. I will tell them, I will tell the world that this is a total fucking lie. So. Say it with you. Thank you. Inkulab, 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 Before we start marching, some of us met in Berlin to think about what we should do today how, and how we organize this project. But we also decided to sit down and collectively write a statement that I've been tasked with reading here. So I will read this statement, which I did not write, but I completely stand by. I did not write by myself, but completely stand by myself. Thank you so much for everyone who helped write this with me. On the 24th of February 2020, the capital city of India, Delhi, witnessed deadly violent riots, predominantly targeted against Muslim communities in the northeastern part of the city, where protesters had been staging a sit-in against the controversial Citizenship Amendment Act, the National Register of Citizens, and the National Population Register, all of which are aimed at discriminating against and disenfranchising Muslims and minorities in India. All information we have at this point strongly indicates that these violent riots were aimed at targeted persecution of Muslims and with the tacit support of the state. It is no exaggeration to state that this was a state-sponsored anti-Muslim pogrom, which has so far taken 38 lives as per official records while the unofficial number stands at 50 plus. Several buildings, shops, houses, mosques, petrol pumps, vehicles and other properties were vandalized, ransacked and even torched by mobs armed with sticks, stones, rods and Molotov cocktails. Eyewitness and recorded accounts show that the Delhi police has not done enough or anything to stop the violent rioters. <laughs> Photos and videos on social media also depict gory scenes of Hindu mobs beating Muslim people, some even to death, as others cheered and shouted slogans. This is by far the most gruesome and deadly violence to take place in the national capital in decades. The riots followed soon after a BJP leader and former legisla legislator Kapil Mishra issued a three-day ultimatum to the protesters and Delhi police to clear the roads. If they failed to do so, he threatened. He and his supporters would forcefully end the protests. A few weeks earlier, Mishra, along with the Minister of State for Finance, Anurag Thakur, had rallied crowds to shoot the traitors in public rallies for Delhi elections, referring to the protesters. Shame! Shame. Shame. Similar vitriolic rallies were held by Home Minister Amit Shah and by UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, along with other BJP leaders all of whom have engaged in a continuous campaign of hate speech against the protesters. Today, we stand here in Berlin in solidarity with the victims of the anti-Muslim pogrom in Delhi and all the victims of communal violence, police brutality and state oppression. 
It is unbearable that people are being threatened, punished and killed as retaliation for peaceful protests against the CAA, NRC, NPR and other discriminatory and unconstitutional policies of the Narendra Modi-led BJP government. We thus demand swift and stringent action against all the perpetrators of this violence, including against the public officials who failed in their duty to safeguard public lives and property. We demand the resignation of the Home Minister, Amit Shah, who has played a central role in inciting hatred and violence and totally failed in his responsibility to provide security inside India and to maintain law and order. We also demand action against leaders like Kapil Mishra, Anurag Thakur and Yogi Adityanath who have time and again incited crowds to hate and violence. There is ample evidence in the public domain that points towards the role and complicity of the state in the violence against its citizens. The public conscience will forever bear the brunt of their actions and, the, and history will judge us more harshly should we sit quietly and let this pass. And we will not let this pass. Enough is enough. This will not stand. Communalism never again. Fascism never again. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to be marching that way. Maybe we can start marching slowly and collecting uh, uh, behind the, um, uh, near the police van there. And, uh, yeah, so don't forget, there's two people here with donation boxes. Please donate as generously as you can. And like um, Adu mentioned earlier, uh, we are going to make sure that there is accountability around.